Right, question one is all about multiplying decimals, and we can split this into uh, two quick steps, really. First step is just to ignore the decimal point completely and do the multiplication with what you have. Um, once you've done that, we're going to be counting how many digits there are after the decimal points. Um, so let's see how that works. Uh, example A, 2.1 times 3.2. Well, if we ignore the decimal point, this is what we get, 21 times 32. Um, for this question, I'm going to do the multiplication two different ways, just to illustrate the methods that are most commonly used. Um, method one, my preferred method, is the sort of traditional uh, column method of multiplication, 21 times 32, where you start by doing 2 times 21. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Um, and next we're going to do 3 times 21. But of course the 3 isn't really a 3, it's a 30. So we have the 0 which goes there to indicate that. So then 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. And finally add up the columns. So 2 plus 0 is 2, 4 plus 3 is 7, and then we have the 6. So that's step 1. Um, I'm going to do step 1 a different way. I'm going to do it using uh, the method of grid multiplication, which I know uh, quite a few of you use. So we split up 21 into 20 and 1, and we split up 32 into 30 and 2. Okay, and we draw ourselves a little box or a grid, and we're going to multiply each of those pairs. So 2 3s are 6, so 20 times 30 is 600, and 2 times 20 is 40. Uh, 1 times 30 is obviously 30, and 1 times 2 is 2. You can probably add those up in your head, I can, but the method I use in general is to add up the rows, so 600 plus 40 is 640, 30 plus 2 is 32, and then when you've got those totals, add those up. So 640 plus 32 is 672. Right, step two is to count the digits. If you look at the original sum, you have, after the decimal places, you have 1 and 2. So you've got a total of two digits after the decimal points. Um, so this must be true of the answer of your calculation. So if you take 672, um, but think, well, the 2 and the 7 have to be after the decimal point. Your answer must be 6.72. Okay, part B. Um, let's go through and do this the same way. So step 1, we're going to think about a sum without the decimal point. So instead of what we were given, we're going to do 65 times 43. Um, and this time I'll do it just by the column method. Okay, so 65 times 43, we start by multiplying the 3 by 65. So 3 times 5 is 15, so the 5 goes there, the 1 is just put at the side for the time being. 3 times 6 is 18, but we've already got this 1, so that makes 19. So I've put the 1 in the next column over and the 9 there. Next I'm going to do 40 times 65, so the 0 goes there straight away. Then 4 5s are 20, so 20 goes there. 4 times 6 is 24, but we have the 2 already, so that makes 26. And then let me just add those up. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 9 plus 0 is 9, 1 plus 6 is 7, and then we have the 2. So the sum without any decimals is 2,795, but let's count the digits. We've got the 6, the 5, and the 3. So a total of three digits after the decimal point is what we require. So if I look at my number, 2795, um, I need the 5, the 9, and the 7 to be after the decimal point. So I put it there, and there's my answer, 2.795. Finally, part C, using the same method again. Uh, first of all, ignore the decimal point. So what we want to do is 71 times 56. I'll use the grid method this time, uh, for those of you who like that. Um, so I split 71 into 70 and 1. 56 is split up into 50 and 6. Draw myself a little grid and work through it. So 5 7s are 35, so with the extra two zeros, that's 3,500. 6 7s are 42, so that would be 420. And then, of course, you've got 1 times 50 is 50, and 1 times 6 is 6. Row by row, if we add those up, first row gives me uh, 3,920. And below that, obviously, I've got 56. 
and to get my total, add those up. We have 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, and then the 9 and the 3. So I've done my multiplication, but I need to count digits now. I've got a 7, a 1, and a 6, so a total of 3 digits after the decimal point. So the same must be true of my answer. So the 6, the 7, and the 9 come after the decimal point. My answer is 3.976. Right, question two is all about division with decimals. Um, and these are the steps that I follow every time. So first of all, think of your decimal as a fraction. And then take that fraction and you're going to uh, multiply the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom, by either 10 or 100 or 1,000, whatever it takes to make the denominator, the number on the bottom, a whole number. Um, the reason being that when we do that, we get a sum that you can do. You can divide by a whole number using short division, long division, your normal method for dividing. Um, and just please remember that when you get to the end, when you've done that, you don't need to change the final answer. That's because you're still doing the same sum. You've changed the way it looks, um, a bit like equivalent fractions, but you haven't changed the value of it. So let's have a look at this example, 3.6 divided by 0 0.02. If we think of it as a fraction, well, 3.6 uh, divided by 0 0.02 is 3.6 over 0 0.02 and if I'm going to make my denominator into a whole number well that is going to be the number 2 isn't it so what needs to be what do I need to, what do I need to multiply by uh, to get 2 hopefully you can see that I need to multiply by 100 um, and if I do that to my denominator I've got to do it to my numerator as well so if you multiply 3.6 by 100 we get 360. Um, now the point here is that you should then have a sum that you can do and well in this case we hopefully we've got one that you can do really quite easily. 360 divided by 2 that should be one that you don't even have to try you just know because 360 degrees in a circle and all that. So divided by 2 our answer is 180. Part B 0 0.007 divided by 4 Let's work through. Think of it as a fraction. It's going to be 0 0.007 over 4. Um, and now step 2, we're supposed to change it so that the denominator is a whole number, but it already is. We've got 4 on the bottom. So actually, we can go straight to step 3. It's already a sum that we can do. So using short division, I'll write 0 0.007. And on the outside, we have 4 that we're dividing by and we simply work from left to right. 4's into 0 goes 0 times. Add the decimal point in there and each of those other zeros has no 4's in it. When we get to 7, 4's into 7 obviously goes once but we've got a remainder. So you need to start adding on zeros at the end um, so that you've got somewhere to put your remainder. So 4's into 7 goes once, uh, remainder 3 and the 3 goes there. So now we're looking at 4's into 30 um, and again, that doesn't go exactly. There's going to be a remainder, so we need to put another zero on there. Um, 4 into 30 goes uh, 7 times, because 4 7s are 28. So we put the 7 in there, um, but the remainder is going to be 2. Um, and finally, 4 into 20 uh, goes in exactly, goes in exactly 5 times. So there's no more remainders, we don't need any more zeros, and we've worked out our answer. So the answer is the top line there, 0 0.001. Seven, five. Okay, part C. Uh, let's let's go. Think of it as a fraction. So I'll write it as zero point six nine six divided by one point six. Again, if I want to make that into a fraction with a whole number, an integer on the bottom, the obvious number is going to be sixteen. Um, so I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by ten. So I do that with a numerator we're going to get 6.96. So now this is a sum that I can do. Uh, if you know and prefer the method for long division, by all means do that. I'm doing this by short division. So we're going to have a number on top inside, so 6.96, and we're dividing by 16. Because we're dividing by a number that you might not know the times table particularly well, I don't for 16, um, what I recommend you do is just write out the times table at the side. 
Um, so I'm going to write out up to 6 16 which is 96 and we'll see if that's enough. So let's start 16 into 6 uh, well it doesn't go, it goes 0 times um, and put the decimal point there and the remainder is, is 6. 16 into 69 well, I know that four sixteens are 64, so it goes in four times, and I can see from that that the remainder is five. Sixteens into 56, I can see it goes in three times, um, and the remainder, 48 from 56, uh, is eight. Um, and we need to put a zero there to make sure we've got somewhere to put our remainder. And finally, sixteens into 80, we can see, goes exactly five times. And so we've done it now, that's our answer, 0.435. Right, uh, change of scene for question three, we're doing prime factorization. If you want to express the number of a product of its prime factors, you won't get this hint at the exam, but you'll be used to seeing it. So we're going to do a factor tree. Now to do this, we just have to start dividing. And it doesn't really matter what you divide by. So you, I could divide by 12 to get 10. Um, I could split it up into, I don't know, four, and 30, because 430 is 120. If in doubt, if it's an even number, just divide by 2. So 120 divided by 2 is 60. 2 is prime, so we circle it and we stop there. But 60, we can continue to break down. So divide that by 2, we get 30. 30 is still even, so I can divide by 2 again and get 15. 15 isn't even, but it divides by 3. So I divide by 3, which is prime, um, and I get 5, which is also prime. So I circle that, and I've got nowhere else to go, all prime numbers. But the question isn't finished, because I need to express 120 as the product of its prime factors, which means writing it like this. 120 is equal to, and we've got these three twos, 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 cubed, times the 3, uh, times by 5. OK, next, for 630, I'm going to do it uh, the easy way. Divide by 10 first. Neither of those is prime, so we keep going on both sides of the diagram, but 10 can be split into 2 and 5, which are both prime. 63 divided by 7, 63 divided by 7 is 9, um, and then 9 can be split into 3 times 3. So I've got my factor tree for that, and I can just write my answer as 630 is the 2, multiplied by the 3 and the 3, which gives me 3 squared, uh, times by the 5, times by the 7. Okay, now one way in which this kind of prime factor decomposition is useful is working out things like this. So the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple, given that we've got the prime factor decomposition, the easiest way is to use a Venn diagram. Now it doesn't matter if you don't call it this, it's the business with two overlapping circles. The one on the left represents the number 120, and the one on the right represents the number 630. And all the prime factors have to go into this diagram, but ones that they share go in the middle. So if we look at both numbers, um, well, they both have a 2. So we can put a 2 in the middle, and it goes there. But 120 has actually got another two twos because it's 2 cubed. So we put 2 squared in the 120 section. And next, well, they both have a 3. So the 3 goes in the middle. Um, but actually 630 has got another one because it's got a 3 squared. So that 3 goes there. Uh, next, they both have a 5, and they have the same power of 5, so that just goes in the middle. And finally, 630 has got a 7, and that goes there. So we've done the Venn diagram. Why is this useful? Well, for the highest common factor, we can simply multiply the numbers in the central section, so in the overlap. And this is always true. So the highest common factor in this case is 2 times 3 times 5 which is 6 times 5, which is 30. So the Venn diagram makes it easy. Now for the lowest common multiple, we want to multiply all the numbers in the whole diagram. So we can do this the long way. So I look at my diagram from left to right. Uh, I've got 2 squared. In the central section, I've got times 2, times 3, times the 5. And then from the right-hand side, I've got times the 3, times the 7. And you can go ahead and do that, do any method you'd like, do partly in your head, and then start using written methods. Um, and it might take a while, but eventually you'll get to your answer, uh, which in this case is 2,520. But there is a quicker way, and this trick is really helpful. If you look at the diagram, uh, consider this 
right hand circle, so the whole circle. Um, if you multiply the numbers in there, we already know what you get because that whole circle represents 630. So I've done most of the hard work already. I'm going to do 630, so all of those ones, and then I just multiply by the ones I haven't used yet, which is the 2 squared. So instead of doing the long sum, I can do 630 times 4, which is definitely a lot easier to do, a lot quicker, um, and you're less likely to make a mistake. In any case, uh, that's the end of this practice sheet. I hope it was helpful.